Welcome, we are Vlad and Mo with more science. Today, we are going to talk about thermosiphon. Thermosiphon is the concept that uh, allows us to operate our loop without a pump. So it allows water to flow just because of the difference in temperature and hence density. So we have built a little experiment for you guys here to demonstrate thermosiphon. We're also going to walk you through the different parts of thermosiphon, thermo and siphon. We're going to get into these details in a second. What we have here is an ever little experiment that represents ever light. On the left hand side, we have a producer well. On the right hand side, we have an ejector well. The convection tube here represents the whole loop. This side is our hot rocks. And we simulate that by using a, a resistance wire wrapped around the bottom of this convection uh, loop. These fans represent a user for the heat that we are producing. So uh, that user can be either electricity production or heating or many other potential uh, users. In the four corners, we've installed thermocouples and these are the four readouts so that you can see what's happening in the loop. The concept uh, or the equation that drives this whole loop is rho gh. Rho gh is the pressure, the value of the pressure at the bottom of a column of liquid where rho is the density, g is the gravitational acceleration of the planet, and h is the height of the column of liquid. So in reality, the difference in density becomes the difference between the cold temperature and the hot temperature. So the hotter we heat up the fluid, the bigger that difference becomes. In terms of the h, that is the height difference between the top and the bottom, the deeper we go, the more the h value becomes. The gravity, we're still working in that one. Just for reference, this is about 40 centimeters height compared to, for example, our current project in, uh, in Gerrit Reed. It's four and a half kilometers deep. So it's, it's a lot bigger than this. Now we're gonna take you through breaking down our equation here, our OGH equation into its component. And we're gonna go through the siphon part and the thermal part. So for the first experiment, we're gonna talk about the density of uh, the two temperatures. So we have two water bottles here filled with water. One is hot, one is cold. The hot one is right here, the cold one is over here. The cold temperature is at 0.3 degrees Celsius. The hot temperature is at 94.6 degrees Celsius. So if we take thermocouples out, you got two scales with two identical flasks on it. We are going to zero the scales and you're going to pour the water into the flask. So this is the hot one going into this flask. Excellent. So the scale is reading 289.06 for the hot water. So we have two flasks that are exactly the same volume and we're filling one with cold water, one with hot water. Which one do you think is gonna be heavier or are they both gonna be the same? Leave your comments below. So the cold one is reading 305.26. This is clearly showing that the cold water is heavier than the hot water. Okay, and in general, that's, that's really what we're doing here. We are changing the rho of the fluids by changing the temperature. If you have colder water here, we have just established it's gonna be heavier for the same volume of water and hotter fluid on this side, which is lighter, so then the heavier fluid is gonna push the lighter fluid out. And as it's doing that, it is heating up itself, okay? And also as the lighter fluid goes to the top, it cools down and the cycle continues forever. And that's really the key uh, driving force behind thermosiphon. And now we're gonna show you the siphoning part. So for the siphoning part, we have two Erlenmeyer flasks here filled with the identical fluid, same color. We already got the siphon tube going. So all we need to do is get the difference between these flasks in terms of height. So let's lower this one because it is less full. We will see that the fluid is transferring from the flask above into the flask below. If you just let it, this will now empty this one down to the level where the tube meets the flask there. 
Now it's just going to go the other way. So siphoning is a very powerful effect when you think about it. We can keep moving fluid between the two flasks without really applying any uh, external energy. We don't need a pump. You don't need anything. All you need is to just change a change in level. And that's the impact of H in our uh, magical Roji H equation. Now, as we mentioned, it's, uh, it's a representation of our Everlight plant here in Alberta. What's inside is water with some orange particles to show the movement of water. We have a sample here of what this looks like. It's just water with some particles. We picked that because if you have water only, you wouldn't be able to see that flow of water. Okay, before we go to coffee, let's point out a few things. You can hear the percolation sound of this. This is mainly because of this setup where the heating coil is significantly hotter than the tube itself. In real life, it's always hot because it's always sitting in heavy rocks. There's no on and off and it doesn't have a sound. As you can see, there is already lots of particles moving out of that bottom section. As it heats up more, the driving force will be stronger and the particles will stay hotter for longer and they will come up to the top and start flowing on the other side. So these four temperatures represent the four corners of our system here in the, in the same order. You will see the temperature here be about 12 degrees hotter than the coldest point. And as we mentioned before, it's really the differential between the two that is the driving force. It's not necessarily hot by itself or cold by itself, it's the differential between the two. So in this experiment right now, we have the uh, convection which is happening. However, in reality, we have conduction from the rock, which goes into the fluid. And that is the main premise of a heat transfer. The fluid itself convectively rotates uh, from the producing section to the injection section. And we are extracting the useful heat, either for use with an ORC for electricity production or for district heat to heat up a uh, district network. So in, in this specific case here, the coil is in touch with the glass surface of the tube. The flow of heat from the coil to the surface of the tube, that's conduction. And the flow of heat from the surface of the tube to the first layer of water touching the tube, that's conduction. Convection literally is the motion of fluid as heat is applied to it, where the hot side keeps going up and the cold side keeps going down. And thermosiphon, it's really the difference between two columns of liquid that's driving the flow and of course, the driving force behind the weight of the two columns is the change in temperature, which equates to a change in density. All right. I think that's everything we want to show. And we're going to let people enjoy the cycle. All right. All right. Let's go get a coffee. Right. Yeah, I can certainly use a coffee, maybe even a snack. <laughs> oh, you know what? We haven't had a snack yet. Oh, these are the cookies from yesterday. Oh, that looks good. There's only one left. Two. Two, huh? And there's two of us. I guess we don't have to share that one. We don't have to share this one. Go ahead. Last cookie. We finished it. Sorry. Sorry. There was two. <laughs> exactly two. So you have to snag them as soon as you come in. We need, we need to go check on this thing. We need to go check on it. Yeah. Let's see how it's going. Okay, so you can think of this as steady state now. There's about 49 degrees here, about 36 here. This is kind of the maximum 12 degrees that we can, uh, we can get with this little experiment. You can see there's lots of uh, particle traffic here. A lot of it comes back and makes it all the way down here. You can see the particles flowing down. If you look, if you look closely, you can see the motion all, all across. This has been a video about uh, thermosiphon and how it drives our circulation rate in the ever loop. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching our video. Uh, this is the second one of the series. If you missed the first one, uh, the rock pipe video is just up here uh, above. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> Derek, I don't want to say that. <laughs>